ISIS attacks and bombings continue to shake Erbil and other parts of Iraq as Iranian leaders meet in Baghdad to discuss security and the political aspects of the violence and instability with outgoing Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki. Joining me now, two House members from Texas, Republican Louis Gohmert joins us from Dallas, and Democrat Henry Cuellar is in Laredo. Gentlemen, uh, welcome to you both. Great to be with you, Shannon. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. All right, uh, Congressman Gohmert, I'll start with you. This week, your governor, Rick Perry, he's been busy with a lot of things, but I want to focus on his comments saying that ISIS could very well be using the porous southern border to pour into the U.S. The Pentagon says it sees no evidence of that. What's your take? Well, <laughs> Uh, the FBI director has previously said, I think about a few years ago, that there were uh, people from terrorist countries who were assuming Hispanic names and uh, learning a few words of Spanish and coming in. The FBI director himself testified to that before Congress. So we know that this kind of thing has been going on. So Governor Perry's not saying anything that's new. It's just uh, it takes a little while for the mainstream to catch up. Congressman Cuellar, do you agree? Uh, no, I disagree with my uh, classmate, uh, Louis Gomer, in the sense that, first of all, the Pentagon it says that there's no indication of that. Number two, I've asked some of the Border Patrol on the ground if there's any sort of indication, and they're saying no. I just had the, the person in charge of this uh, border area uh, for CBP, and, and again, he told me that there's no indication. And on top of that, the Mexican government uh, has said that there's none there. Now, is there a possibility? Of course, there's always a possibility, and we have to make sure that we're ready. But at least right now, there's no indication, but we have to be ready for anything. Well, the fact is, as well, uh, we Shannon, have... I, was, I was quoting the FBI director, and so I'd be surprised my friend Henry would, would say the FBI director did not testify to what he testified to. So I'll have to send him that transcript. All right, Congressman Cuellar, do you want to follow up on that? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. I think he was talking about, uh, uh, you know, some things uh, uh, in prior years. But again, if you look at some of the attacks that we've had in the U.S., none of them came through the southern border. And again, there's been no indication. But again, we have to be ready for anything. But again, according to the men and women that are doing their job right now, not years ago, but right now, uh, and I just got off the phone with uh, two of them just right before the show. I just wanted to make sure again, and they said again, there's no indication. But again, we have to be ready for anything. All right. I want to ask Shannon, you both about that. General John Kelly, Marine General John Kelly. He's the commander of Southcom, has testified to the House, has testified to the Senate this year that the penetration of our southern border by uh, criminal cartels as well as terrorist organizations poses, in his words, an existential threat to the United States. That's pretty serious. Somebody needs to start taking notice in this administration. All right, I want to read you both a quote and give you a chance to react. This comes from one of your Democratic colleagues, uh, Congressman Adam Schiff out of California, saying that most Democrats and Republicans are extraordinarily wary of being sucked into a large occupation, both because it will kill a lot of Americans and because we saw in Iraq the last time that it didn't work, referencing uh, how the U.S. moves forward with this threat presented by ISIS. And we see the scope of what we started there. Appears that it has expanded some. Congressman Cuellar, where do you stand on that spectrum? Well, you know, first of all, we have to go after ISIS. You know, there, there is uh, right now there's been limited strikes in Iraq. And we, you know, certainly we need to keep in mind that the uh, border with Iraq and Syria is non-existent. So if we're going to go after the leadership and we're going to go after them before they come after us, and they go after those Western uh, targets, we saw what they did to that reporter. We have to go after them. There is a non-existent border, and I do support uh, strikes going after them, even if it calls going into Syria. Uh, Congressman Gomer, do you think that we can get the job done uh, not only neutralizing but getting rid of ISIS or stopping this uh, brutal march it's on short of boots on the ground? Can we rely on allies to handle that? We help from the air. What do you see our mission or our uh, involvement being? Well, if we do just hits from the air, that's repeating the mistakes of the Clinton era that led up to 9-11. Whereas there is a good example, and I like to follow examples that work. If you look in the early months of, of Afghanistan's fighting, people have forgotten, but between October of 2001, when we found out where the hit came from, until uh, around February of 2002, 
We had less than 500, around 300 special ops. They were boots on the ground, but they were embedded with the locals helping them. We gave them some weapons and we gave them aerial support. And within about four or five months, the Taliban was totally routed. Shannon, we could do that. And I agree with my friend Henry. We cannot allow these, the ISIS, the radical Islamists to keep growing in strength. We've got to hit them. And I think that what we did initially in Afghanistan was great. Then we started adding tens of thousands of boots on the ground and we became occupiers. Occupiers don't do well in that part of the world. But you help the enemy of our enemy hit our true enemy. And I loved hearing Senator John McCain today telling the president he needs to take another look because that's what he did. You know, John McCain supported the radical Islamists in Israel, in Egypt, went over there told the uh, Egyptian people that didn't want radical Islam they needed to put the radical Islamist Morsi back in charge. He reassessed, figured out he was wrong, and now he's urging the president to do the right thing. I'm thrilled to see that kind of thing happening. He was for Gaddafi before he was against him. So it, sometimes it is important to take another look at where we are. We can do it with a few boots on the ground like we did in Afghanistan before we became occupiers. All right, we are going to run up against a hard break here, gentlemen. So I thank you both, Congressman Gomert and Cuellar, for your time today. We appreciate it.